to Midland Community Stadium. We had some rain just moments ago. It has passed, and after a bit of a delay, we are ready for rivalry soccer tonight inside the Saginaw Valley League. Hello, everyone. My name is Brad Tunney. That's Adam Jaxa, and we're proud to be bringing you tonight's game on Midland Community Television, so thanks for dropping in. Adam, a rivalry matchup between the Midland Chemex and the Dow Chargers. We're so very excited for this one. And uh, one of the keys coming into the game tonight, outside of it being a rivalry, is just the fact that it did just rain, and it is on turf. And for the first time this year, Dow is going to be playing on a much quicker pitch than they're used to. Yeah, no, Dow is used to that grass field, and you mentioned it. I mean, this is a Midland team that practices on this field, that plays on this field. They're used to that pace. And now on top of that pace, we're going to see it Quicken a little bit more with a, a quick pop-up shower that we had to delay this game by about 10, 15 minutes. So certainly something to watch for tonight is the pace of that ball, just passing the ball back and forth. Not going to be what Dow is accustomed to going from grass to very wet turf. And then just speaking to the intensity of a rivalry matchup, right, this has been, for the last five years at least, a matchup dominated by the Dow Chargers, not since 2014 as Midland in boys soccer's gotten a win over Dow. So speak to just a rivalry matchup. We both played high school soccer. We know what these games mean to the players and to the parents and to the schools. It's just going to be a great night to watch these teams go after it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's two teams that are very close and familiar with each other. And the fact that Dow has had that winning success of late, you know, Midland gets them on their own field tonight, an opportunity in what has been, uh, you know, an uncertain year, but still sports going on, an opportunity for them to come out, and play the game that they love, and to compete in a rivalry, no matter the sport, no matter the time of the year. It's always good when you get a rivalry going. Fun to watch uh, two teams go at it. Yeah, we're definitely excited for tonight's game. want to let you know that you can watch replays of this HH Dow High versus Midland High soccer match on the MCTV network. MCTV's channels uh, can be found on Charter Spectrum channels 188 to 199 in Midland and through channel 99 on AT&T's U-verse. This game is also live streaming on MCTV's network, a Community Voices YouTube channel in beautiful high definition. So make sure to check that out. And check out MCTV's website at cityofmidlandmi.gov forward slash MCTV for playback dates, times, and you can always follow them on Facebook to learn more. So it's been a, a great service for so many years to the city of Midland, uh, the work that MCTV does, all the volunteers that work to put on uh, these great shows for folks in the area. And even more important now, as capacity limits in the state of Michigan due to COVID restrictions have not allowed as many fans into the gates, it's good that this service is available and people can watch a, a live stream rivalry matchup like this. Oh, there's no question, Brad. It's excellent what, uh, what they do in order for fans to be able to watch. Again, social distancing, not as many fans in the stands, but the game goes on and a good rivalry coming up for us here tonight. Just like with all the other uh, athletic events taking place within the state of Michigan right now in high school, two spectators for every player and coach. There are no cheerleaders the way there are in football. Uh, at games right now in Michigan. So uh, a very, very sparse crowd, really limited to just the parents of each player or maybe an additional significant other here or there uh, based on attendance permittance. But yeah, uh, this is gonna be a, a small crowd, uh, but a great game and a rivalry game for the first time being played on this new turf field that features both the Dow logo and the Midland logo, which is really neat as both of these teams are gonna be uh, lining up beyond those logos tonight. Kind of give, gives you a, a bit of a home flavor for both sides when they both have the logo there at midfield. Introducing you to the Midland Chemex, they come in with a record of 6-2-2 two, and two on the year. Uh, they're coming in off a win against Carmen Ainsworth, 5 nothing against the Cavaliers their last time out. In fact, they haven't dropped a game since their fourth game of the season at a very tough grand blank team. Uh, they lost that one 6 to nothing, but since that point, they're 4-0-2, oh, so they're playing some of their best soccer of the season, and they're led by uh, head coach Rico Barassi, who we had a chance to speak to this week, and we were so very excited uh, to get his feel for how his team 
is coming into this matchup. You see them huddling up on the sideline right there, getting pumped for Good tonight's game, and welcome led to by their captains, Stadium Evan King, tonight, Robert pivotal, Perry, pivotal and Matthew Schulte. On the other side Chargers, for the Dow Chargers, a 5-3-1 and one record. They're currently the higher ranked team in Michigan's power and ratings at the moment. That's how they're determining First, district seating this year, the NPR. Dow, Dow, on paper, and just historically, one, would consider ben, the, be the favorite in this game, led by Drew Emmerich in his second Number year. Two, but again, Jonah, Turf field, Dow not familiar three, with playing Matt on turf Stoney. field. This is going to be their first game of the year Number on the four, turf. Tyler Midland, as Adam said, uh, plays five, all of their games River at home Penn. on the turf. They get to practice here. Six, and with Luke the rain, Meyer. too, it's going to be a little bit quicker as Number well. Seven, so even though on paper this may seem like a matchup Number that favors eight, Dow a Jeff little bit C. more, does the weather and the Number home field 10, advantage for Midland Sam kind of equalize things a bit? Number 11, Jack Wollahan. Chargers Number being introduced 12, uh, to the fans in attendance 14, tonight. This is a Dow group that uh, has Number a little bit more experience 15, than Midland Buck. does. And uh, that's 17, also something that obviously plays a part in rivalry matchups. 18, uh, sometimes Florida. younger players, maybe Michigan. underclassmen. Uh, can they Number let the moment 19, get a little too big? Rangers. Dallas got 10 seniors on the team Number compared 20, to four Lance for Midland. Coleman. Well, you'd mention it, Brad. You, what, go all Number the way back to 2014, Alex the Potter. last time Midland won this game. Number so you talk about Justin experience. Schaefer. Not only does Dow have it on Number the pitch, but they have it in winning this game. They know how to beat Midlands and with juniors and seniors on their squad. They've done it before. They've gotten inclined with the rivalry and uh, certainly a team that is, is playing really good soccer right now. Uh, one and thing uh, that is very interesting coming to the matchup is just all the underclassmen. We take a look at the starting lineups and we go, boy, Number zero, three Kevin starting Ruth. forwards for Midland, underclassmen, including two freshmen. One, and then for Ronnie Dow, Alfano. their two starting forwards are both underclassmen Number as well, four, including Hurt. a sophomore who is a returning varsity six, player as Josh a freshman Thurlow. last year, one of their most talented kids, Number Jeff seven, Sneed. Connor so Schell. soccer really uh, a lot different Number than nine, a sport like Jonathan football Jenkins. where in terms of physical maturity, you almost have Number to be 10, an upperclassman to really make a difference. Where in soccer, sometimes Number that skill 12, of younger Abram players Haddad. can really shine through. Get your conditioning ready and you're good to go. Whether Number you're a 13, freshman Matthew or a senior, Schultz. it's certainly a different game. But yeah, to come 15, in in any sport, Andrew you know, Stegger. soccer and football, very different. But still, Number to come 16, in and have Robert an Perry. impact as large as some of these players have Number had 17, as a freshman Evan or sophomore King. and to contribute, uh, that's a pretty Number good 18, feeling knowing Andrew that they're Sabine. having that outstanding year and you're going to have them for a couple of more Number years 19, after that Nathan as well. Gambrell. Again, now uh, the 22, Midland Chemic players Bobby are being Van introduced. A bit of a light numbers year for Number head coach Rico Barassi. Uh, he's been having to bring up some Number kids from the JV, Cole help them Carpenter. out, and they certainly played a big part in their win over Carmen Ainsworth the last time out and Ian in their Nagama. win against Powers Catholic uh, three and games ago. That was a tough matchup against uh, Powers Catholic, but they managed to get a 1-0 shutout tonight, win. Rico and uh, yeah, Rico Barassi has been around here for quite some time, well-respected in the city of Midland, as is his counterpart tonight, Drew Emmerich, who is a longtime leader of the Midland Ladies Soccer Club dating back uh, at this time, to the mid-2000s. So you now stand. that the teams have been introduced, we shift our focus to the flag and get ready for the playing of our and national anthem continue tonight. continue to fight for the freedoms we enjoy. Let us honor and respect their efforts and our country by gentlemen removing their caps, veterans and service members not in uniform may render the military salute and everyone standing at attention, placing their hands over their hearts as we proudly sing our national anthem.
with that, we're just about ready to go. This game's scheduled to get underway at 6.45 tonight initially. Uh, we're now 20 minutes past the 7 o'clock hour, so uh, a little more than a half an hour delay. But at the very least, we will be getting this game in, and that is a positive. Um, you know, we, we discussed this so much um, with the football games and a lot of them across the state that have been canceled, postponed, moved, delayed, whatever it may be, and, and in other athletic events too due to COVID concerns or positive cases around the state. But at least for me, Adam, every game that gets in this year feels like a fortunate event, just that we are playing athletics. It's been done in a safe way, and to get a game in in its entirety feels like a positive each and every time. Absolutely. Whether or not and however you need to get it and however many fans can be there, happy to get this one started tonight between Dow and Midlands. Looks like Midland will be kicking things off. They've got Cole Shelb, sophomore center fielder, on the ball in the center circle. And we are underway. 40-minute halves here in high school soccer. This matchup last year was a 1-0 Dow victory. And they're on the attack early with speed and pace up the left wing. That's Ethan Schwartzentruber earning a corner kick. So early attack here for Dow. They earn a chance to score. And they go quickly back to Schwartzentruber, who's inside the box, delivers a right foot kick at the chest of the keeper, Schulte, and he stops. Well, a good job there by Midland. One, the tackle right there to, to get that out of bounds and force the corner kick, and then uh, obviously the save being made. You had mentioned it. Dow is a, a team that has been really good in the SVL, and they're coming out tonight trying to get an early goal. Looking at this Dow offense, they're going to be the aggressors, I think, tonight. They come out in a 3-5-2 formation, so that's three defensive players, three defenders, a left back, a center back, and a right back, and then five midfielders, uh, a defensive midfielder, a guy on the left, a guy on the right, and two center midfielders that'll play with the forwards up top. Well, it's a little bit of a riskier formation, Brad, only having three, but if you take a look and look at the three guys that are in the back for the Chargers, no surprise, it's all upperclassmen. You've got two juniors and a senior, so they're trusting that back line of those three to come up big in huge situations defensively. Here's Midland in the attacking third now to our left. Getting a reset on the back line with Ian Enema. And now a swing to the near side. That pass chopped away by Ethan Hauk. Here comes a throw in. Say. At 30 yards out. Played off the chest of King. Evan King has it stolen away, and here comes Dow with a 2v2 opportunity moving forward. Chargers find Jeb Sneed, the sophomore. Dances to the touchline, gets by his defender, across into the middle, and it's just missed. An opportunity there uh, for Sam Senkowski, a senior attacking player goes wide of the net. Yeah, I like that creativity from Snead. A couple of moves, quickly goes to the right foot on the outside, serves the ball in, and uh, just a little bit too tough an angle there, but all created by Snead on this right side. Excellent work to get around the defender and get a ball in, into play there in the middle. A little less than three minutes into this one. Again, we were on a bit of a delay thanks to a rainstorm and some thunder that swept through. Beautiful blue colored skies above head now. Some cloud coverage as well as the lights are on and taking effect to keep this one bright and underway. Another attack coming for Dow. This is Sneed on the touch. Sophomore delivers it to Hauk. The most defensive midfielder of the group. Schwarzentruber. Who leaks through two defenders. Now inside the box, he goes down, and it was defended well by Jacob Hay. Well, this is just an excellent attack so far. Great passing, switching the ball from Dow. They're able to find some space, being creative once they get on the ball, and putting on good pressure against Midland. Dow resetting with Justin Schaefer. He delivers a left foot kick into the box. It's poked away. Good fight in the middle for Midland. Oh, the, the tough thing here for Midland, can they keep the ball when they've won it back? Dow's done an excellent job of 
getting that possession right back and, and getting it back on the other side of Midland's territory here. Dow this year, a record of 5-3 and 1. Midland, 6-2 two and 2. Here's Luke Meyer. Ooh, a deflected ball to the touchline, scooped by Schulte. And Midland has a chance to reset. Looks like Midland will be getting a substitution into the ball game shortly, too. Quick one. Yeah, they just need a spark right now, Brad. I mean, it's all Dow. And here's a little possession for Midland, but see how quickly they lose the ball. Dow has come out, and uh, they're doing an excellent job winning the ball back and then keeping it when they do win it. That was, again, Jeb Sneed coming up with that pass. Now a ball hit over the top, and uh, Schwarzenschuber couldn't track it down before it find the hands of Matt Schulte, the senior captain keeper. A good touch there in the center midfield by Evan King, captain for Midland. Touch up top to Shelb, their leading scorer. Football player, wrestler, track and field runner. Plays four sports for this Chemex athletic, pro athletic program. I love those guys that play multiple sports, just extremely athletic and uh, know how to be a part of a team, usually a, a good team person. And uh, obviously very talented when you can play and have success in multiple sports at the high school level. How about two in the same season, too? I always felt like that was... Uh, that takes a different breed of an athlete to go from one practice to the next, one game to the next, preparing for two different opponents in the same week. That's, that's a lot to take on. Out on the football field in a couple of days then. That's right. Yeah, he's a varsity player as a sophomore in football this too. So not only 20, a four sport athlete, Andrew but Stegger. a varsity athlete as an underclassman for both football and soccer. And he wrestles and he runs track. That's Cole Shelb top of this uh, offensive unit for Midland, and Rico Barassi. He's got some great hair out there, too. Brad. He does. He's the one with the flow right there. He's standing at about the 28-yard line right now. There he is. What do you think that looks like after he takes off the football helmet? <laughs> Can't look any crazier <laughs> than it is right now, that's for sure. Here's Shelb. Oh, just missed it. Had it go through his legs, and Dow will counter. Uh, Midland's got to try and find a way to keep the ball at the top. When they're getting it up to Shelb, he hasn't been able to keep that ball, and it's been knocked away pretty quickly, making it really easy on the backs uh, for the Chemex, or for the Chargers, rather. Jacob Hay works with his center defenseman mate, Robert Van Valkenburg, who boots one off. And now Shelb will get another touch. You see, every time they get it up to him, Brad, it's, it's one on three or one on four. He's got nowhere to go with the ball. Dow has had really the only maybe one or two true attacks on net right now, but there's a steal by Shelb. Ball lands perfectly for him, and then it's poked away defensively for Dow. It, it may be a situation where Shelb might want to try and, again, hold it and, and let those three attackers, because they're playing kind of a diamond attacking style up top. Shelb, obviously that top guy, but he needs some help up there. Very difficult to try and weave around an experienced defense when it's one on three. And one thing Rico Barassi did say to us this week is just that Shelb is coming back from injury, and we see his hands on his hips right now. This is also the first week that the SVL has first gone from two, two games in a week seven, to three Connor games Shelb. in a week. Yeah. So another key for both of these programs is fatigue and conditioning, right? They're used to playing two games in a week, and now they go to three, and which programs in a shortened year of training due to COVID are going to be uh, conditioned enough, paced enough to be ready for that change. So we might see a little additional fatigue tonight, too. Here comes a throw for Midland. A good looking touch for the Chemex by Connor Shelb, the brother of Cole up top. Connor, the senior that also plays an attacking position for Coach Barassi. We did have a final score, too, from the JV game tonight, which unfortunately had to be cut short due to the weather situation. The game was called at half as the storms came through. Dow won 2 to nothing. junior varsity. Here goes Shelb. He blitzes by the defense. A shot on net. And a little weak as the save was made by Ben Ishmael. 
Well, again, right there, it's a one-on-two situation, and that time Schaub just took it himself and able to get through. Didn't quite get enough pace on it to sneak it by, but a good run up top. Yeah, that was really impressive. There were three defenders on that back line, and they stood no chance to Shelb speed. And that's kind of what it's been. If you look at across the top right now, it's Shelb and those three guys, and there's a pretty lengthy gap between his, his outside mids slash forwards, depending on what you want to call him. So it seems like they trust him up there by himself to kind of create for their offense in the final third. Two different color spikes, too, or just the sides of the spikes are different for Shelb? I, I think He's it's not the in the sides, picture right yeah. now. There's a through ball, good looking pass, but offsides near line judge had him off at around the 10 yard line on the football field. That's very close to the 18 yard box. It's gotta make it a little bit easier for the line judges when you've got the, the marks every yard mm -hmm. on the field, when you're trying to look across who that last defender is when that ball gets played. And that looks certainly like the right call, a little bit too eager over on that far side. Good win on the header by Sam Hatfield. Hauk. Poked away and won by Robert Perry. I uh, beg your pardon, that's Andon Sanini. And now Meyer back on it. Up top, Sneed saves it and earns the possession for Dow. A little bit more life here from the Chemex. Get that opportunity and shot from Shelb. After Dow came out really through the first five, six minutes and had it deep in Kemic territory. Rusher coming up top. Beaten. And poked away by Jacob Hurt on that back line for Midland. Now far side, we'll see what the speedster Schwarzentruber has in him. He touches out tied to Hatfield, played in the middle, and well received by Schulte. The keeper makes a stop just outside his six yard box. Uh, it's just a dangerous front four up there for the Chargers. They've got some technically sound players that are not afraid to go one-on-one. -on -one. Looking for the triangle pass there up to Shell, but poked away. And Porter Baker, the junior center back. And we'll keep going to our right with the Chargers. Last year, not just a one nothing win for Dow, but the game-winning goal came with about a minute and a half left. They played to a scoreless tie for 78 and a half minutes last year before Dow found the game winner. Shelb, look at the pace on the far sideline. He saves this from going out of bounds. And no one's home in the middle for him. I mean, that's it. He, he's 30 yards ahead from any of his teammates. He's one on four, sometimes five, up there by himself. But again, he's not shying away of just taking them all on by himself when he gets the ball. That'll be interesting to watch if they make that adjustment and try and get some of those midfielders a little bit more forward to help them out because it's just a doesn't seem like a, a task that's favorable when you're going one on four against, again, like the Chemex are, or like the Chargers are, an experienced back line. This ball looking for the midfield. Looked like it went off the hand of Evan King, but no whistle. And that's Stow Ball. Yeah, inadvertent right there. His hand was close to the side, but I thought they might give that a call. Kind of a chicken wing situation. Looked like it had gotten him. Well, we're 12 and a half minutes into the first half, 40 minute halves in the high school game. Got a ton of great events for the Midland Athletic Department taking place here this week. Not only the Dow Midland soccer game tonight, uh, tomorrow night is the JV and freshman games for football between Midland and Mount Pleasant. And then on Friday night, Midland Mount Pleasant varsity football action from right here at Midland Community Stadium. And that one will also be broadcast on MCTV. Their nice rivalry right there. Midland, Mount Pleasant, what, Brad? About 20, 30 miles separating the two mm -hmm. high school programs on the football field. Yeah, that'll be a great game Friday night. They played to a one-point game last year. And even though it's not the same rivalry, of course, as Midland and Dow, Midland and Mount Pleasant, don't get it twisted. That's a, that's a solid rivalry within the Valley as well. So there's an additional attacking player up with Shelb now. Here on the near side, Midland 
as Connor Shelb, his older brother, up with him. Shelb duo up there at the yeah. top. But yeah, little adjustment. Thought we might see something different, and it looks like he is staying up, or maybe just leaking up a little bit higher. But there's no doubt Cole Shelb's certainly going to need some help if Midland's going to find a way to try and penetrate that defense. There's Shelb on the interception. He's looking ahead, but lost the touch. This game has really been played between the two 20-yard lines. We have not had very many attacks outside of the first corner kick in the opening minute for Dow, and then an, an attack by Shelb. This game has pretty much been played within uh, the middle 60 yards here. Yeah, a lot of game played in the midfield. And outside of the first few minutes, it's been pretty even back and forth. And Dow came out ready to go, got that corner kick, and had a couple of balls that were close to the goal mouth. But since then, that latest attempt from Shelb has been the best effort we've seen over the last five, six minutes. Tell you what, though, Brad, you can't ask for a better night for soccer. Mm -hmm. It did rain a little bit. It's got that fall feel out there. It looks like the rain is out of the forecast for the rest of the night. Lights turned on and a beautiful stadium and excellent turf field. Just a really nice night for some soccer between these two rivals. There's a deep ball pushed ahead. Shelb waited on it and he stays on side. He is the last man back. A heavy touch into the box. A shot on and it leaks through for a goal. Cole Shelb puts Midland on the board. Goal by number 10, well, Cole interesting Shell. there from Ismail, the keeper. This was a huge touch that Shell took, and I was surprised that he went back to the net and didn't come out and challenge this ball. It took a long time for Shell to get there, wind it up, and still had a short angle. And that's a, that's a goal that's got to be made there. I don't know if Ishmael potentially hit the, hit the post or not. It looked like he was holding his head as that ball snuck through, but what a finish for the sophomore. A great pace, long run. You could tell Shell may be a little gassed at this point now. But that was a, a dead sprint for about 45 yards after that ball was played from the middle. The speed, the touch, and the finish. Perfectly executed for Midland. So it's 1-0. Uh, Chemix, but now Dow is in the attacking third. Schwartz and Truber. to get around his defender in the corner. Good finesse to throw it back in the middle. And now with Walla on hand. And played to the keeper, Schulte. Schaub showed us, didn't he? He said, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about with needing extra attackers. I'll just go one on two, one on three like I've been doing. And you're right, he read that ball correctly. Misread in the back. And then he turned on the speed. Now a good looking free kick opportunity. Set piece here from 25 yards out. Dow has three players on the ball and the wall for Midland has four guys in it. It is just a little chipper that goes through the uprights for Jeb Snead. Give him three on the board. Looked like he wasn't shooting that or it certainly had the loft on it that he maybe was trying to play that across but went right at goal and what he was looking for, but a little more sense of urgency here from the Chargers since giving up that first goal. That was a big goal for Midland, Adam. We talked about how they hadn't beat Dow since uh, the 2014 season in district play, but they have only also scored one goal total in the last five years against the Chargers. 2019 to 2015, only one goal, and it came in the tie back in 2018. So even getting a goal on the board for the Chemex against the Chargers has been tough to come by of late. And taking a 1-0 lead is huge for their confidence. Yeah, absolutely. That's always important for momentum, whether you're playing any sport, to get on the board first, feel good, create, and finish. Excellent moment for the Chemex and specifically for Shelb, finding a way to hit the back of the net. They're looking to target him again. Midland has it. 
Nearing the 18-yard box, here's Shelb. He'll have a one touch on net. Oh, it hits the crossbar. The follow is there. Goal for Midland. Well, how about it? Two quick ones. And that one really came out of nowhere. Joshua Thurlow, starting right winger, the freshman who had a goal and two assists on Monday, continues this fine week of play. Again, quick, quick creation from Shelb, quick left-footed touch off the bar, and then Thurlow able to get over that ball and not sky it over the net, drills it back home. And how about this start out of nowhere for the Chemex? Quickly, they're up 2-0. Oh, and Drew Emmerich, the second-year head coach of the Chargers, I think is complaining to one of our officials that there was an offside call needed there on the initial ball to shell. It was not whistled. Stop was, or play was not stopped. It was certainly close, but I thought the play on looked good from our angle. Yeah, didn't see any issues here. Again, Shelb, excellent creation up there. And just to get that left foot, off foot on the ball, nearly goes in. And Thurlow there to follow it up. What a start. And, and to not even overlook the play that Thurlow made there, to not give up on it. And then on a ball that's bouncing above his hips, that is a tough play with your off foot to finish that, even though there was no defender on him. That's still very tough. And a freshman holding that composure nonetheless as well. And again, the sophomore here, you can see that's the, the point man for Midland. You get it out of the back, try and find number 10's feet and let him create. Midland with momentum. 2-0 lead, first half, 21st minute. Toss near the 18-yard box. And it'll be cleared out. Midland looking like they're playing with just a little more confidence, too, as they find attacking players like Shelb and Evan King in the middle. Yeah, they were kind of lost at the start again. From the jump, Dow came out. They got a couple of chances, had it deep in the final third of Midland. But you get that goal from Cole Shelb, where he kind of created for himself. And then you get the second one, a little extra pep in the step here. Why not for Midland again, a team that I'm sure they're well aware the last time that they've, they've beaten Dow, and now they've got them behind 2-0 here in this first half on their home turf. When we think back to the tie that took place in 2018 that we were discussing too, even though it was a tie, that was a year in which Dow was uh, really out ahead in the standings and in fact finished with 20 wins that year, first in the SVL. Um, Coach Barassi said, look, just earning a tie in that game felt like winning the World Cup for us because, uh, you know, Dow was the SVL champions. And for us, we were down a man in that game. They were playing with 10 men. Good little through ball there. But playing with 10 men down one nothing, they managed to find a goal in the second half to tie it in 2018. That's huge. Now playing in a different situation with a 2 nothing lead. Can they hold it? How about taking advantage of your opportunities, Brad? I think the, the Chemex, they, what, had three shots on goal and two have gone in. You had the run from Shelb early that was saved by Ismail, but last two have gone in the back of the net. Pretty good average to have two of your three shots on net. Find the back. Back right wing. This is Andrew Budd. We say his name for the first time tonight. He plays in that back line with Porter Baker and Justin Schaefer. As Adam mentioned, two juniors and a senior there. Now in the box, ball played in, and it's off the chest of uh, Schulte. But again, right place, right time on a shot by Schwarzentruber. Yeah, and again, don't count Dow out of this because they've got some very creative players up top. Good on the ball, and they've found some crevices to sneak by this Chemic defense throughout this first half, even though they trail. Thurlow, good placement on the ball to Shell. Crosses it off the head of the defender. It finds the feet of Midland, and another goal! 3-0 Chemex. What a finish that was. 
Robert Perry picking up the gold. The holding midfielder, the senior captain, unleashes one from just outside the 18-yard box, and it is all Chemex right now. now that's a 20-yard strike, low line drive to the opposite corner. Wow, Robert Perry, what a finish. And again, this has come out of nowhere. It seemed like it was a pretty even game, and the momentum now all on the side of the Chemex. They've taken advantage. Perfect start to tonight's game for the Chemex. Again, had only scored one goal against the Chargers in the last five years, six total matchups. And they've got three in the first 25 minutes tonight. One for Shelb, one for Thurlow, and one for Perry. They're distributing it well. Schwarzentruber, who's shown good pace tonight, loses the handle there. And now this pass is picked off. Substitution in the game for Midland's back line, by the way. Jonathan Jenkins poked that ball away. Schwarzentruber has a tackle made, and he lost it. Quick rise in the crowd there on the fake out far side. <laughs> they liked that move, didn't they? Yeah, there are a few students here. You can, you can tell the, the voice and the attitude of the students. There's a good shot on net. Jake Wallahan. Schulte makes the stop. Yeah, Schulte's done a nice job tonight, Brad. He's he's had some balls that have come his way, a couple that have been on target. He's cleaning them all up. And again, I know there's been good placement from the other side, but you can't say the same with the few shots and the goals that have gone in for the Chemex. So a jump by Schulte to keep the clean sheet so far through the first 20 to 25 minutes. And th this seemed like something that I was not familiar with on an entrance to Shelb, it's taken away. But both coaches have been resting some players at times. So Shelb has missed the last three games with a bruised thigh, just trying to take care of him. He looks incredibly fresh tonight. And the keeper for Midland, Matt Schulte, also got rest in the last game in their 5 nothing win over Carmen Ains, where to be prepared for tonight's game, the Chemics were resting, getting ready for tonight, getting rid of just some nagging injuries, and they look fresh. Yeah, they certainly do, and you're going to feel very fresh when you're creating the opportunities that Schaub has been able to do. As you mentioned, not playing the last few games comes in, and he's had an immediate impact through the first 25 minutes. Certainly a part of their first two goals, getting one, and then uh, finishing with the third. Taking advantage of those opportunities, so important, and it's shown through in this first half for the Chemex. Here's Jonah Don. Near side, Sneed. Back to Don, poked away. Midland looking to clear. They're just a little bit more sense of confidence on the ball. Remember, we talked about it the first five minutes, Brad, with Midland just, can they keep the ball a little bit longer? They were getting rid of it. They weren't able to keep any possession. Right now, on the ball, a little bit more comfortable if they've settled in, obviously getting those three goals is a big reason why. Shada Nishida, very talented club soccer player, a junior who's been inserted off the bench tonight. Now you flip to the other side in the Chargers. How do they respond after giving up three goals? Because they had the early attacks. They've had some decent looks at goal. You can see there's talent up front. And they have not been beaten yet in the SVL. Ooh, play, ball played in, it's deflected, and it leads to an own goal. First shot was put on by Jonah Don there. And it ricochets off a defender for the Chemex, leading to the goal. We get a replay of it here. Yeah, that's just a nightmarish thing that happens right there. You never want to be on the other end of an own goal, but off the, the knee. And... Uh, and Jacob Hay wears that one, unfortunately, along the back line. And there's your, there's your answer. I mean, what kind of response? You get a fluky type of goal like that, now you're on the board. A little potential momentum, maybe you settle down, and still 13 minutes to be played in this first half, which has been full of goals out of nowhere, really. Yeah, I was kind of expecting a low-scoring game between the two teams, just considering what the scores have been of late. Last year, 1-0 Dow, 
the two matchups in 2018 was a one nothing, uh, a one one tie and a two nothing win for Dow. Uh, Dow did mercy Midland three years ago, eight to nothing. But in general, these are low scoring affairs. Three one already in the first half. Evan King looking to put one on. It's off the left post, and boy, Ben Ishmael quickly, great reaction, spins and stomachs that one. We've seen two off the posts already. That one goes off the post. We had Sh uh, Shell put one off the crossbar and then was finished home, but how about the sniping outside of the box oh. early from the Chemex? That was beautiful. Great first touch to lead himself for Evan King. And then with not much body momentum, he got a good amount behind that thing to hit the post. Ismail, lucky that one didn't bounce off of him and then roll back in with that quick turf. Good job by him to cover that and not give up that fourth goal. Oh, here's a long shot on the way. Deflected in the box. Left kick, it's in. Goal for Dow, and now they're within one. Alex Futter. Alex. Futter. Futter off the bench, the junior nails one home. We've got five goals in the first half. Well, again, it just Rest didn't feel no like goal. this was going towards a game that would round up four, five, nothing after it got three to nothing. And sure enough, the Chargers come back with two. And again, that was, you know, somewhat of a, a favorable bounce on a deflected ball that led to that play for Dow. Did they go offsides on that call? I don't think they allowed that goal. Oh, you know what? They went with a goal kick-esque play yes, off that. You're right. They did end up whistling that offside, so it stays 3-1 Chemex. So after the deflection, Futter offsides in the box. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even see the flag go up, just missed it. But it got deflected on the initial shot, and then he ran on. And that's a killer right there for the Chargers. That one runs long. They thought that they were within a goal, and instead now back down to two with uh, just under 12 minutes to go in the first half. That would have been a big one two to get before six, heading to the locker room, Meyer. right? Uh, two for the you know, a, a, number 20. A one goal deficit, so much different than a two goal Andrew deficit. Stetter. But if still you're feel like there's a goal potentially nine, be had in this first Deckin, half, Brad. Yes. With, with just over 11 minutes to go and. How many times we've seen the ball go on net and get finished? This has been a wild game, and I'm sure it'll stay that way. Ashida bounces one forward. Now it finds Wollahan in the middle. He plays a ball through, and it's driven away. Goals right now for Midland for Shelb, Thurlow, and Perry. In that order, Shelb got them on the board first. And then an own goal puts Dow on the board just a few minutes ago. They also scored about a minute ago, but it was waved off thanks to an onside call. Offsides call. If it was onside, it would have been a goal. Well, you see there's a little bit more confidence building here. This has been all Dow since they got that own goal, putting the pressure on, keeping the ball almost like what we saw through the first couple of minutes. And that's big. Again, you get that momentum, especially going into a half. Even though you're down two, still know you got 40 minutes left to play. Great cross into the box, but no one home for the Chargers. One thing that favors Midland playing with a lead is the way they format themselves on the back line, they start four defenders, but then two holding midfielders that really make this back line feel like they have six defenders. So they can pack it in if they need to, to hold on to a lead in the second half. They're built to do it. Oh, here's good pace. Sneed, he's been held in check so far. Rounds the defender. Great tackle in the box and no call. All ball there for Robert Van Valkenburg. Yeah, I had no problem with that tackle. I thought he did a great job getting the ball, and uh, his body eventually slid into Sneed. But I think that was the right no call from the official. Good clean tackle there right around the edge of the box. Brilliant tackle. Risky play anytime you hit the turf as a defender in your own box. But it pays off there. under 10 minutes to go before the half. 
mean, I know the Chargers are down two right now, but if you're a Chargers fan, you got to feel good about the pacing and where this game is going over the last few minutes. Since they got that own goal, there's that sense of confidence and maybe that they've settled back in and putting that pressure on the Chemex here. Still eight and a half to go. It'd be huge if they can get one more before the half, but certainly this game has changed from what we saw when it was three to nothing just five, 10 minutes ago. And yeah, we have not seen a touch for Cole Shelb in quite some time. As we say that, here he is on the ball. Numbers moving forward for the Chemex. Ball placed forward for Perry. And a great tackle on the far sideline for Andrew Steger. Uh, beg your pardon, that's Andrew Budd. Senior right back who came all the way over from the other side of the pitch to make that play. But the Chemex seem like they're okay with that counter-attacking style here where they're, they're gonna let Dow kind of have possession and then when it's go time, they find the feet of Shelb and they get up the field and create opportunities like this. Ball played in, Shelb heads one forward, it's deflected, and another corner on the way for Midland. Unless they were able to get that for a throw in. No, it should be a corner here. Again, these are the type of situations and how the Chemex scored their first three goals. Really out of nothing. They get it down here, put a shot on goal, and it's found the back of the net. Line drive in the middle, the header by Jacob Hay, the defensive player, but it just spins wide. Perfectly executed, just not on target. Yeah, no one found him in the middle. He got his head on it. And you know after he unfortunately had the ball knock off his knee and go in the only goal so far that the Chemex have allowed. He would have loved to get one back on the opposite side. Good set piece though, good couple of corners on the opportunities there for Midland. Hey, if you're uh, enjoying the game tonight, want to let you know that uh, MCTV has other great high school sporting events that they'll be broadcasting this year. So stay tuned this fall. Uh, four more games and events on the MCTV network. MCTV volunteers and staff will be televising Midland High and Mount Pleasant football this Friday, plus Midland and Dow football in a couple of weeks. Volleyball, girls golf, and girls swim. You can check out uh, the schedule on the Facebook page for the MCTV network. Comes a goal kick for the Chemex. Three one right now. Midland has given up an own goal, and their goals have come from Shelb, Thurlow, and Perry. So there you see some of the upcoming events for MCTV: the uh, Midland and Dow football game, volleyball, girls golf, girls swimming, all put on by uh, volunteers who love providing this service uh, to community members here in Midland. Such a great uh, service that is here in the city especially this year as folks are unable to attend these sporting events to get them on live and on tape. Folks are certainly thankful for it. This game again feeling like it's been condensed a little bit between the 20 yard markers. Dow has certainly been favored in time of possession since Midland took a 3-0 lead. And you hate to say that Midland has kind of backed off a little bit offensively, but it does feel like the philosophy of driving balls to Shelb has kind of slowed down. Yeah, and it, it's been that from the start. You can see Midland, they're consistently keeping 10 uh, players behind the ball at all times. Shelb the only one up there, but that's their point, man. That seems to be how they operate. That hasn't changed with the goals that have been scored. They've been running that all night long. Dow is looking to put a shot on net. Instead, Meyer loses the handle, and it finds Wollahan. He'll cross one in. Great entrance, and it is seen through by Schulte to leak out of bounds. Center judge says it was deflected, and that'll be a Dow corner kick. Yeah, I thought so. The assistant referee here on the near side, Brad, he's got to look all the way across the field. He initially said goal kick, so I think that's right from the center referee to change that looked like it certainly was deflected not from the keeper but I think one of the defensive backs good ball played in right on the PK spot it's headed away Swartz and Truber has it knocked out and here's Shelb getting a touch probably as deep in his own third as he has had a touch tonight he has been camping around the center circle waiting for entering passes to his feet he scored on one of them and almost assisted on another 
give him a lot of credit. He's got his hands on his hips right now. He has been doing a lot of work up there. They're asking a lot of him, basically in the attacking third by himself, starting their opportunities for goal, getting that first one and then creating the second. This is Don to Wallahan. You really like the, the patience here from the Chargers. But again, Midland's okay with that. They're gonna sit back, allow those mistakes to happen, and when they get the opportunity, take that mistake as they do there. A lot of back and forth here, you would expect as uh, we finish out this first half and go into the second. Meyer still on possession. Luke Meyer lost it. And here comes Porter. Baker up to it. Looks like Baker has moved to the left side defensively, and Andrew Budd has moved into the middle with Nishida on the right side. Here's a smoked ball from just outside the box, stopped by Schulte. That shot put on by Meyer, who has looked to be a little more aggressive in the last couple of possessions. Yeah, I don't know what, if he was a little nervous, he was going to overkick that, Brad, but it kind of looked like he took something off that shot. Driven ball up to Shell. Taken by Bud. Near side, Nishida. Now Bud will work out of the back for the Chargers. Again, the possession here is certainly the game that the Chargers like. They, they have done that very well tonight. Now they need one of their attacking players to come up with a big play and finish in the final third. Midland packs it in defensively. As you mentioned, 10 guys behind the ball yeah. right now with this 3-1 lead. Yeah, and that plays in well. When you do get a lead, again, they were doing that from the start. But now that they've got the lead, it can get frustrating, too, as an attacking side, Brad. When you're going against 10 guys and you know you've got two goals to make up, sometimes you get a little bit more anxious as it seems like uh, the Chargers are a more patient team. They like to possess, but you can get anxious for some mistakes. And again, that you're susceptible to that counterattack, especially with a talented attacker like Shelb on the other side of the field. Here's a good looking ball, push forward, poked away. Schwartz and Truber ends up back with it for the Chargers. Pace ball played in the middle for Don. Tries to find Hatfield, and it's deflected back. Wolahan. Low line drive is poked away. Hatfield back on it. And now King pushes forward. You got to give credit to the Chemex. They've done a nice job in the back. And because of that, we've seen some longer shots taken from the Chargers here over the last three to four minutes. And you like that, though, because that's how they got their first goal. Ripping it from outside the 18, an own goal deflection is how they got on the board. So keep shooting. Wollahan up to Sneed. Now Meyer and Don. Hatfield, a lot of touches here in the forward third for Dow. And another deflected ball. Dow will keep it in their attacking third. We've got just 20 seconds to go in the first half. Nishida lost it. And if Shelp can hold it, they'll take a two goal lead into the break. Hatfield, nothing doing. So that ends the first half of play. How about the half for the Midland Chemex, a program that in the last few years have not been able to solve the riddle of this Dow boys soccer program. But tonight, three goals in the first half, Adam. Got to be happy with that. There's no doubt about it. Again, they were a counterattacking in that first half, and that worked out with Schaub up top. They've got a lot of confidence in the sophomore, and he showed it, basically getting that first goal by himself, read it right over the defender, and then a quick poke on net. And uh, the carom off the crossbar, goal two. I mean, they've done a good job, and then packing it in, almost frustrating Dow a little bit now as they sit behind three to one. Those goals, Brad, they, they really came out of nowhere. Uh, for the Chemex, but that's what a good counter-attacking team does, taking advantage of those opportunities they certainly did in that first half. So Midland three, Dow one. We're excited for the second half, which will be coming to us in just a few moments. Until then, we'll step aside and come back with more rival reaction from Midland Community Stadium right here on MCTV.
Midland Community Television has exciting news for Midland area nonprofits. Recently, MCTV has undergone changes both technologically and organizationally to help you share your story better and reach your audience wherever they are. Our new services include public service announcements, special event recordings, audio podcasts, YouTube video, live TV broadcasts streamed online, and more. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Looking for a new adventure? How about an opportunity to volunteer in the community? Then come down to MCTV, Midland Community Television. You can learn how to use a studio camera, run equipment in the control room, or be the host of your own TV show. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to find out how you can become a volunteer producer or access user. Well, I can only imagine the benefit to the community is through what you hear on the streets as far as did you see or there was information that I didn't know about. It would be Midland County Cancer Services or uh, the police department or city hall meetings, uh, commission meetings. And so it's the news of the community on television. Midland only has one television station. MCTV is the station for Midland. The MCTV network helps Midland residents share their story with the community. Our media producer workshops will help you get started. In one short session, you will learn how to create media that will educate, entertain, and enrich the community in which we live. Get registered for a workshop by calling 837-3474, follow us on Facebook for more information, and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube and your podcast platform for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. MCTV gives you a chance to to uh, expand your um, your horizons in terms of what you can express, that the rest of the community can benefit from witnessing it, and it gives you a chance to um, enrich others through your enrichment. I think that's really important. Whether you're an artist, whether you're a musician, whether you have a passion for political ideas or spiritual ideas, MCTV gives a, a, a voice to that, an opportunity for your voice to be heard.
the MCTV network, you can share your story through television, online video, social media, and podcasts. Since 1984, MCTV has provided public access to television for the people and organizations of Midland. This hasn't changed. However, there are many other ways for you to reach your audience wherever they are and whenever they want. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. I don't recall the exact details of getting involved, but I know that it was, uh, I had an interest in television. I had an interest in producing programs and uh, Midland Community Television was a perfect outlet for that and has been for the last 30 years, a way for somebody to uh, become involved with the production of television programs and, and saying what you want to say, showing what you want to show with very few limits on it, and then having that actually be uh, produced and sent out to the community at large. Welcome back to Midland Community Stadium, everyone. Again, that's Adam Jaxa. I'm Brad Tunney. We've got a 3-0 lead for the Midland Chemics right now over the Dow Chargers. And while we may be a little bit surprised by that result, we did have rain that came through earlier in the night, uh, Adam, which, of course, creates a bit of a different uh, environment. Uh, maybe the skill level of certain players decreases or gets better. The pace of the game certainly different uh, with rain and a fast pitch tonight. But overall, a rivalry game. You never know what to expect when these two teams get on the pitch. And we've had a great high-scoring affair so far. No complaints on our end. Yeah, four goals in the first half. What do you have for us in the second <laughs> half? It's It's been very entertaining. And how about uh, a Midland team again? You've talked about it. They haven't won this game in a few years, but they came out ready to go, took advantage of some counterattacks, got up 3 nothing. A, a snipe goal that we saw from Perry just outside the 18-yard box. Only one in so far for the Chargers was an own goal on the side of the Chemex, but they seem to have found a little bit of life at the end of that first half, possessing the ball a little bit. So 40 minutes up on the clock, I think still this is a game to be decided. Two goal deficits, you never know what can happen. Yeah, Midland plays more of a defensive style just based on their formation, but it's they who have been the far better offensive team tonight. You mentioned that Dow's only goal is on an own goal. They have not been able to create much on their own in terms of good opportunities at goal. Yeah, it's been two different styles. Uh, simply the Chargers, they've been possessing the ball and once they get it to the final third, you gotta give a lot of credit to the Chemex defense. They're dropping those 10 guys back on the ball. So difficult so far for the Chargers to find that final third play to get them in the net. And on the other side, it seemed like the Chemex, they're okay. Sitting 10 back, getting it up to their forward, and uh, Shelb has taken care of a, a couple of opportunities, and they've built this lead. So interesting to see how tactics potentially change on both sides in this second half. At goals right now in the first half uh, by the Chemex for Cole Shelb, he was on the board first, and then Joshua Thurlow, a freshman who had a goal on Monday plus two assists, continues his hot trend of play with another goal tonight. And the third one for the Chemex came from senior captain midfielder Robert Perry. So they've been getting contributions from up and down the lineup. A senior, a sophomore, and a freshman have scored. Uh, a defensive midfielder, a winger, and a center forward have scored. So again, contributions from all classes and all areas of the field for the Chemex in this home matchup against the Dow Chargers tonight. Midland again came in with a 6-2-2 two two record, but in their last six games, they have not lost four wins and two ties after a 2-2 two two start. So they're playing some of their best soccer of the year, and that is continuing tonight against a Dow team that entered play 5-3-1 on the year. And after uh, mercying Mount Pleasant on Monday, uh, they uh, come out a little flat in this first half to give up three goals. 
My coach always used to say, Brad, one of the most difficult leads in soccer, the two goal lead. So again, set the stage, 40 minutes. That first goal, whoever gets that next goal is uh, certainly gonna play a big part in dictating what the outcome of this game is. That was, uh, growing up playing soccer as well, was always just the funniest thing that came out of a coach's mouth, right? We know so much about coach speak all over different uh, sports. As we've got a whistle and an early uh, set piece opportunity for Dow. This is their second set piece in the attacking third tonight. Jeb Sneed missed the opportunity on a ball that went through the uprights going the other way in the first half. Let's see if they can take advantage here. It seemed like kind of a lobbed ball in that went over the net. So we'll see if it's a shot directly on goal or you try and play it into one of those four guys on the opposite side of the box. Sneed will have the touch. Shot on net, it hits the wall. Looked like it was blocked initially there on the left side of the wall. That's why you have him there. Excellent job by the Chemex. Putting those four in the wall and doing a nice job of clearing it out and letting themselves set their defense again. Yeah, that was John Jenkins who was able to pull it out. Now a uh, throw in coming for Midland. But uh, back to that point, it's like, you know, a one nothing deficit is certainly scarier than a 2 nothing deficit. But coaches used to just say that, you know, with a two-goal lead, you're probably a little more relaxed. Yep. Once you give up that first goal, you now don't have momentum anymore, and you're more liable to get up uh, the second goal. I always just thought, you know what? If I have a lead, I'd much rather be up two goals than one. No question. But coach speak is coach speak is coach speak. I think you, you hit it right on the head, though. <laughs> Susceptible potentially to just easing up a little bit. Uh, no, I certainly don't think that's the case here. Obviously, this is a rivalry game. They know right. what's at stake. And uh, trying to win for the first time in, in six years. But 40 minutes to go, a lot of time will be interesting to see again. That first goal in this second half, if we do get one, uh, is uh, certainly going to play a big part in the finish here. Uh, we did have a comment earlier uh, on the YouTube live feed about uh, the JV game. That game was called at halftime due to some weather that came through the area earlier in the night. But it was a 2-0 two two victory for Dow. They got an extra goal right before the half, and that was the final score tonight. And that is an official game. You only need to play one half of soccer for it to be made official uh, in the state of Michigan. Great weather since that cell of storm came in. Early that uh, what sent this game back by 15, 20 minutes. Started uh, about a quarter after 7 o'clock, and it was really a, a quick pop-up storm. Saw some lightning, some thunder, and ever since then, it's been a nice 50, mid-50s night and a good game between these two. Good for the grass, right? Yeah, good for the grass that's not out there on the brand-new turf field that looks gorgeous. A beautiful turf field. That That is a, a great point. Both the Dow and uh, Midland logos in the middle of the center circle here. It's, it's beautiful. Midland was one of the first schools, you know, uh, boy. Uh, oh, boy. A firecracker of a shot ricochets off the right post, off the foot of either, uh, uh, yes, it was Rob Perry who struck that one. He's already got a goal tonight, almost had himself a second. And he was the one that struck that ball from about 20 yards out to get the third goal earlier. But you're right, that just came out of nowhere. And that's another one we've seen hit off the woodwork tonight. I mean, two off the crossbar, one off the post for the Chemex. Wow, Perry, a great strike there. He's a kid who uh, Coach Barassi speaks really highly of. He's excellent uh, student, high GPA, holds multiple leadership positions in his senior class. He participates in the STEM program. Just all in all, great student athlete for this uh, Chemex program. Oh, sneaky touch there for uh, Thurlow trying to find Shelb. Feel a little more sense of urgency for the Chargers coming out in this second half. On the ball, winning 50-50s a little bit more. But Midland still finding a way to hold possession. Sneed hits the deck there on a slide. And again, the, the biggest part here for the Chemex in this second half, they just want to stay organized, Brad. They don't need to score a goal. Certainly, they'd love to get some if the opportunity presents itself. But biggest thing in the back, stay organized and don't give up any easy opportunities 
and let the Chargers get back in this game. A little double team there. Puts Justin Schaefer on the deck. Free kick on the way for the Chargers, and this will be Porter Baker. He's replacing an All-State player at the center back position from last year, Logan McNamara, who was great for this Dow program. And, and Baker's been incredibly impressive as a first-year starter at center back as a non-senior. Uh, Coach Emmerich really spoke highly of the fact that he was able to step into what is essentially the quarterback of the That's defense the uh, on the pitch and, and contribute early. Kid who really loves to distribute the ball, pass out of there. He strikes balls really well, finding the targets and the midfield. And he was also battling an ankle injury earlier in the year. So all of those things combined, they've been really happy with the work that Porter Baker has done for them. Well, there's arguably no more important position on a soccer field than the center back. You've got to have someone that's vocal back there, that's a leader, and that you trust with the ball. And in those specific situations, making sure, again, that your back unit is organized. You're in those right spots. It's a, it's a demanding job and an important one out there on the pitch. And at times tonight, including right now, no, they have shifted again. At times tonight, it has looked like Bud has moved to the middle, the starting right back, and Baker has been moved to the right side. But right now, we see a 19 there standing on the 20-yard line with the black mask on, or the dark green mask, at least. That's Porter Baker. Midland entering the attacking third. And they lose control. Here's Thurlow, a lanky freshman. Through ball, pushed forward. Midland read it perfectly. Again, so many men back for them defensively. It's going to be tough to put a ball over the top to one of their top scorers, Jeb Sneed, tonight. A little bit more possession here for the Chemex and uh, an actual counterattack try right there for Dow. We didn't see any of that in the first half because they had the ball most of the time. That was a dangerous ball played in the middle by Shell, but no one home. And here's Sneed. Can he get something going? Club player for Vardar down in the Metro Detroit area. Sneed, a varsity freshman from a year ago, one of their leading scorers now. Yeah, and you can certainly tell uh, Vardar, very well respected premier club here in the state of Michigan. You can see the foot stills that, that he's got, but if you're Dow, you've got to get him going, get him involved. Again, try and find a way to crack this back line of the Chemex because outside of that own goal mistake, they have been excellent tonight. Wallahan, it's been a steady figure in the defensive midfield spot tonight for Dow. Up to Hatfield, who's been quiet so far. Now Sneed, back to the goal. Hatfield again, lefty kick on the way. It's just wide right. Yeah, and that's better there for Dow. Again, good combination playing through Sneed. They've had good combination and one-on-one -on -one opportunities tonight, but overall, Ismail good in the back, or excuse me, uh, Schulte good in the back, and uh, the defensive line continues to do a nice job as well for the Chemex. Possessive atmosphere here in the second half. Midland now with Thurlow and Shell. Two on three opportunity busted away by Bud. By the way, the coverage of this Dow High versus Midland High soccer game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff tonight. If you'd like to create games like this one, sign up for our media creator workshops. You'll learn how to be a producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, edit your own video on professional software. Learn how your creation can be made into a podcast or even a video on YouTube. So you can call 837-3474 to learn more, or there's more information about NCTV at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov forward slash MCTV. Again, th can't think of a better year to have video content, podcasting, audio, any way you can get it when things are uncertain as they are here in 2020. Shelb, another attack, one on two, dishes it this time, and it's broken up. 
I like that idea, just needed a better first touch on that far side. And I think that was the plan there, but couldn't quite get it across. Shadini. Poked away. Don. Shadini breaks it up. That ball looks like it's going to, oh, I thought it might stay in there. Had that spin on it, Brad, right down the side. Again, I like the Chemics here. They're, they're pushing the tempo. They've got the two-goal lead, and they have come out, and they don't just want to sit on this lead. They're attacking and going right at Dow, and it's kind of Dow that's on their heels through the first 10 minutes of this second half. We haven't really yet discussed the implications of this game on the SVL standings. Dow came in a perfect 5-0 and in conference this year, tied with Grand Blank, who they'll see this Friday, two days from tonight, uh, Dow is going to be playing at home against the Bobcats of Grand Blanc, who are currently also undefeated in the SVL. That'll be uh, essentially an SVL title game during the regular season. Grand Blanc 5-0, Dow 5-0. But if the Chargers lose this one and lose against Grand Blanc, Midland may be in a position to actually finish second in the Valley this year. They have not finished ahead of Dow in the standings in quite a few years. Yeah, big week to finish out September, open up October. And uh, again, what a big win this would be for the Chemex if they can close it out here. But for Dow, that's a tough week, playing a rivalry game and then another team that's undefeated in the SVL. And yeah, Grand Blanc, one of the 15 to 20 best programs in Division One right now based on the Michigan Power ratings, which is how they're seeding again this year. Those ratings are 25% of your own win percentage. 50% of it is determined by your opponent's winning percentage. And then the final 25% is determined by your opponent's opponent's winning percentage. Hey, give them all the numbers and the stats <laughs> there, Brad. A lot of math involved, that's for sure. There's a big time driven ball from about 50 yards out for Baker that goes wide left. Uh, but those uh, Michigan power ratings certainly create a more even, um, you know, illustration of your schedule difficulty you know you have small schools who play in small conferences that may have a a really high win percentage at the end of the year but they didn't play the schedule that bigger schools like Dow and Midland played you want to be able to cover for those things and right now Dow in division one these are two division one programs in boys soccer Dow is 31st in points in the state and Midland is 63rd sounds a little bit like a RPI like you start to hear when it is a little convoluted yes yeah, we get close to March Madness and college basketball and the RPI talks come out. But, yeah, you want to try and be as accurate as possible in the rankings. And Wow. You see a yellow card given there on the near sideline. Drew Emmerich has just received a warning here. Second-year head coach for the Chargers. Now you can tell he's frustrated, Brad, and he was on the officials, I believe, early from mm -hmm. that second goal that the Chemics scored. And... He was pretty fired up at halftime. He told his team to get to the locker room quickly, wanted to discuss things, certainly wasn't happy to go in after 40 minutes down 3-1, to one and certainly didn't make it easy. They got behind 3 to nothing. But it, it has been a frustrating night here so far for the Chargers. Yeah, I think you come in with an expectation. And, and one thing Coach Emmerich did say to us this week was, you know, last year this team won 20 games. They went undefeated. They won the SVL North. Um, high expectations, they had plans to get through the districts, make a run in the state tournament, and unfortunately they lost in the SVL crossover championship to Grand Blanc, and then lost in the opening game of district play, um, and because of it, they felt like they carried high expectations into this year, and he's been trying to instill in his players that you can't work under the shadow of last year's team. You gotta come in with your own individual mindset, expectations from this year and this year only and he said one of the biggest struggles for the Chargers this year has simply not been focusing on the expectations of last year and equating that to this year but just having their own individual identity for the 2020 high school soccer season we got a bit of a clock issue right now that's why we're yeah. uh, tied up at the moment we had the stoppage with the yellow card and waiting for the scorekeeper to readjust and add it looked like a couple more minutes up on the clock but they got it all sorted out mm -hmm. by the way all the uh, uh, helpers here for uh, 
Midland and Dow High, most of them are parents that work the PA and the scoreboard and the stats and uh, photography and the managers and all of those things. Most of them are, are parents of the players. Dow in the attacking third now. Crowd starting to get into it. This is Wollahan, and it's booted away. Dow will look to reset with Baker out of the back. Big drive forward, and that goes way wide to the right. Ambitious effort. <laughs> you could say that. He went for it. Again, I, I think it's uh, that's a credit to the Chemex defense tonight. Sitting 10 behind the ball, making sure that they stay compact and uh, not allow some weapons at the top of this lineup here for the Chargers to get going, and that's certainly been the case so far. Here's Shell. Oh, it took an extra skip there. He almost beat Bud to that ball, even while being behind it. And this is what you want for the Chemex. This will waste some time here as they go down, get a set piece, an opportunity, and a look at goal. They've been dangerous on their corner kicks tonight. Set piece coming in. Good ball, header on, just missed. And Dow will get the clearance they need. I tell you what, the Chemex, or the Chargers rather, they are struggling to find their marks there in the box on those set pieces. That's twice tonight that there has been a wide open Chemex ready to put a head on the ball. Sedini. And the throw will come from Jacob Hay. Into the box, header back, and cleared. Now Thurlow deflected backwards, and Dow back on possession for what feels like the first time in a few minutes now. Sneed. Oh, and a pass left begging, intercepted by Sedini. Mm, Midland catches a break there. And a foul called. I'll tell you what, there have not been very many whistles in this game. For it I being a rivalry, for it being a little wet down there, it's been pretty clean. In the midfield, I think that's the first whistle we've had. We've had a couple just outside the 18, yeah. but it's a lot of those 50-50 balls typically right around midfield. That's the first one we've had tonight. Yeah, it has not been very chippy at all. This is a great placed ball right at the... Uh, goal line of the football stripes, but no one home for Dow. Nishida. Wolahan. Hauk. And now Schwarzentruber tries to split defenders. A spin on that ball. Hatfield. Chest touch. He tried to put one on net. Schwarzentruber does, and it's straight at the gut of Schulte. I was just going to say, if you're Drew Emmerich and the Chargers, I think you want to see, you, you got to see a little bit more sense of urgency from your squad here for the final 25 minutes. And, and finally, some life there, putting a shot on net. Maybe that'll trigger something and help them get some momentum going. Because really, it's been the Chemex that have controlled this second half for the most part. Hatfield pushed off the ball there, and they'll get a chance within 30 yards for another set piece. They've been unsuccessful on their two close range ones tonight. Sneed is over the ball. The sophomore attacker, and he'll be pushed off of it with Schwarzentruber coming in to approach. You think he'll take a shot on net here or trying to find one of his teammates' heads? Uh, this one's a little bit deeper. I think you want to serve this in. He's got five attackers up there, six attackers. Oh, wow. It's batted up by the keeper, Schulte. It hits the football crossbar. And that's a corner kick on the way. That was actually, as a shot on goal, very well placed. Yeah, shows how much I know, right? I mean, he went right at goal. He had the leg for it. Great placement and a better save by Schulte to keep it out of the net. So much skill shown there by Schwarzentruber to even get that ball on net from that far out to apply the dip and the bend that he did on that ball to get it around the wall. Really skillful for the senior. I haven't mentioned it, but Schwarzentruber, a hat trick on Monday, by the way. 
Held scoreless tonight. There's a ball over the head of Schulte. He misplays it, and Midland gets the clearance. And there's been some really dangerous corner kicks on both sides tonight. Uh, Dow sideline complaining about a foul, and a yellow card has been assigned. But who was that assigned to? Was it Sedini? Yes, the Midland player who's just checking out right now. He gets a yellow for that tackle. Now 10 minutes, I believe, right? Yellow card in high school. Yep. Go sit. Had a few of those in my day, Brad. Yeah, I always used to like getting yellows. More in the club game when you didn't have to take a seat. The penalty, pretty harsh in the high school <laughs> game for a yellow card. 10 minutes in a game this, uh, this close and, and this much of a rivalry is a lot. Good bend on that ball, too. Played into the box. Here's Meyer. Left-footed strike deflected. Sneed puts it in, but he's offsides. It'll be the second disallowed goal tonight. Jeb Sneed was offsides, and this one a pretty easy call for the AR on the far side. I don't know what the Chemics are arguing. I don't think they knew that it was offsides originally, but yeah, he had that right from the start over there, the assistant official. And here's a replay of it. And where is he at? Yeah, he's way offsides. Yep. It's a good call by the officials. It's unfortunate for the Chargers. That's the second time they've been called offside. Same type of thing. The ball goes in the box, deflects, and they've had a couple guys right there to put it in the back of the net. Getting a little more chippy now. As we mentioned, no fouls really in the first 60-so minutes of this game. We've had three, four place kicks here for Dow in the attacking third. This one a little bit deeper. Baker just passes to the far side, and now the ball gets played in. Over the top, that leaks out of bounds. Just to reset things for you, 3-1 Chemex. We have not had a goal in this second half yet. All of them came in the first half. It was uh, Cole Shelb scoring the first goal of the night for Midland, then the freshman Josh Thurlow, and then the senior Rob Perry, a captain for this club. Those are the three goals for Midland. The only goal for Dow, an own goal, that was pushed in by Jonah Don for the Chargers and hit off of a defender, Jacob Hay, for the Chemics. There's the four goals tonight. We get four goals in that first half, and so far we've gone 20 minutes without one here in the second. Shell did a nice job there to box his defender out and earn possession, but no one running with him in the middle. Well, as we get later in this game, Brad, closer to 15, 10 minutes to go, and assuming that the Chemics, they're still having that one or two goal lead. They're gonna wanna get the ball to Shelb up there and have him take some clock away, possess the ball. Is the, so Dini is back in the game already. It certainly hasn't been 10 minutes. Is it just maybe you have to take a seat? That might be the new rule. Tour? Hmm. Yeah, because that was the player that we think was carded just moments ago. He did automatically take a seat on the bench, but was back in there quickly. So Dini, a junior starting midfielder. Just got another card out as well, so yeah. That one assigned to Sneed? Is that who it was? That might have been the case, which again, he's still in the game, so we apologize. And here comes the rain again, too. Nice ball placed in. Dow ends up with it. Here's Thurlow. He can't track it down from going out of bounds. Yeah, rain falling uh, left to right a little bit with the wind pushing from uh, the left side of the pitch to the right. How will that change play in the final moments? We're in the 24th minute of the second half, 40 minute halves for boys soccer in the state of Michigan. Now it's been pretty calm again since we saw that thunderstorm that delayed the start here, but. Shelb onside for this receive. He crosses over, but lost the handle. And this is what you want from the Chemex. Again, as we get later, get the ball to the feet of Shelb and let him create and keep that ball on the offensive third and opposite side of the field, away from your goal mouth. You got to keep feeding number 10. Rain really starting to fall now. Nishida up to Don. And the 
poke away there for Perry. Up ahead, Shell. He's got no one to beat. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and he bounces it off the post. His second goal of the night. How good is this sophomore? Get the ball to his feet and let him go to work. He had no room between the keeper and that far post for error. He put it exactly where it needed to be. Off the bar again. Look at this. He's got to get it past that outstretched arm, but keep it inside so it goes in and he goes off the bar and scores. And that might just do it here with just under 19 minutes to go. What a finish. Oh, and the excitement for Shelb there. That was brilliant stuff on the finish. It's currently 4-1. to one. Chemics in front. The clock has stopped right now. And Coach Rico Barassi is pointing up to the press box to our right. I think they're going to reset the clock, get get something different up there. It might have been running through that goal. Four goals allowed tonight by the senior Ben Ishmael, who missed the last two games, getting some rest. And really the only one that I think he would have liked to have back is they're going to pull him, it looks like, Brad, bring in new keeper. But the one that he probably should have had was the first one that mm -hmm. tucked inside, beat him near post. Other than that, there really hasn't been an opportunity to get any of the three others. They've been low and tucked away in the corner. The other was off a bounce back off the crossbar. Goes down as a tough night for him, but there's been some good placement of those goals tonight from the Chemics. Yeah, not much you can do with that last one that Shell put in. A deflection off the crossbar, as you mentioned, that's another toughie. Uh, but uh, a change has been made in net for Dow. It's Hayden Boss who played the last two games as the starting keeper for them. Boss is a senior backup uh, goalkeeper for Ismail. And, and one of actually the, the bright spots of this Dow program right now on the boys soccer side is all of the talent they have in net. Uh, Coach Emmerich said that, you know, he, I mean, this is a guy who's been coaching soccer for many years. He played overseas in England for a year. He played locally at Alma College. He says he has four prolific goalkeepers in the program right now which has been a luxury for them uh, when it comes to practice, when it comes to giving their starter, Ishmael, some rest. Uh, and tonight, Ishmael just, you know, had, had some tough plays to work on. Yeah, and again, a lot of that give, give credit to the way the Chemics finished. You know, we saw it in the first half. They were all on in the counterattack phase. Took advantage of Shelb up top. He created those first two goals for him. Then they get a snipe shot from Perry. And then in the second half, give credit to uh, the Chemics again. They didn't come out just sit on that two-goal lead. They came out and attacked, and actually they've been the better side, in my opinion, in this second half, mm -hmm. controlling the tempo a little bit, possessing a little bit, which we didn't see in that first half. And uh, Cole Shell made it just ended the night moments ago with that fourth goal to put him up by three. Oh, Hatfield, a brilliant through ball. Placed in front of the net. Sneed couldn't handle. That was one of the best executed plays for the Dow attacking uh, players tonight. Just didn't lead to anything on the back end of it. Yeah, if you're Sneed, you want that one back. His eyes lit up there. He's wide open just beyond the spot. If he can settle and get a good shot on it, that would have been one of the better looks tonight for the Chemics outside of the couple that have gone in but were offsides. And he's the one right there in the middle, the playmaker, but uh, couldn't find the touch. Well, now a whistle, and it'll go back the other way. Dow looking to move with pace. Less than uh, 18 minutes to go. Trailing four to one, and Nishida just simply dribbles the ball out of bounds. Yeah, he didn't realize he was right on the black line. There aren't a lot of lines out there. Again, different from the typical grass field. We were playing here on a football field, and he didn't realize the black line was the end line just dribbled it out. Here's a touch uh, far side for Sam Sinkowski. I am surprised that it's a it's a black end line, Brad, instead of maybe a, a brighter color like a, a white or a yellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the soccer lines here, the 18-yard box, the six-yard box, they're all black, center circle as well. Ooh. 
Schwartzentruber tried to put one on and it leaks out of bounds. Corner kick on the way. Again, these have been dangerous tonight for both sides. We've seen the Chargers put a couple in that have nearly become goals. Same for the Chemex. Chargers got to get on the end of this. Curved ball put in the box. No one's head on it for Dow. It's still being volleyballed up and down and finally cleared. Now Shell one on one against Bud. Here he comes again, already with two goals tonight. Shell and the body by Bud is enough to push him off the possession. That was well played defensively. Midland still threatening. And a Dow throwing. Schwarzentruber. Big ball coming to the far side. Senkowski into the middle for Sneed. Sneed with a full head of steam moving forward and an outstanding tackle made by Van Valkenburg. Yeah, he had a lot of space, but again, one on four. Just tough with how sound this de defense has been tonight. Hatfield puts one on. Not a bad looking strike from distance. Collected by Schulte. No, we remember late in that first half, those were some of the better opportunities for Dow. Those strikes from 20 to 25 yards out because they simply have not been able to break through that back line tonight outside of, again, some of the deflections and a couple of their offenders being offsides. Really been one of the stories outside of Shelp tonight for the Chemex is the defense. Mm -hmm. They have stayed compact and done a really good job of controlling the attackers up front for the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, we see a shot right there of the back line for Midland. They are all just very compact playing as a combined unit formation on the defensive side that looks like they're playing with six defenders at time along the back line. And when you're playing with a lead, that is so beneficial. All these changes coming for down now. Yeah, wholesale and looks like they're just Empty in the bench, bringing out the starters and 14 minutes to go give some experience for guys in this rivalry game. But, you know, they're disappointed coming out with uh, the outcome that looks like is inevitable coming here in the last 15 minutes. We'll get you the names of the guys in as we touch the ball. Here's one for Richard Penn. It goes by River. He's a junior. He wears number five and now a touch. Uh, on the far side for Tyler Sanchez. He's deep in the corner, double teamed, and a corner kick on the way. Isaac Skinner is also checked in, a sophomore forward. He's got the yellow spikes there in number 17 with his back to us. Also in the game, Adam Pfeiffer, a senior back. And Max Doty, another senior. Corner kick on the way. Good placement. Finds the feet of Lance Coleman. Coleman on the turf, and it's booted forward, getting all the way to the backup keeper, Hayden Boss. Yeah, a little bit of a late call, but definitely had to make that one. That was all foot right there on that attack from the Chemex defensively. So a set piece coming up here for the Chargers. Trying to get something back, and within a couple of goals, Looks like uh, River Penn is on it first. Penn downing the number five right there. Back to us. Wall gets pushed back. A little etch in the side of the head there from the barber. Looks good. Sharp cut. Here's Penn. Drive into the box. Contact made and blocked again. Another effort by Coleman pushed outside. And Nishida sees it go by him. Shelb is on his horse. Ooh, and he couldn't get there. Again, just tremendous organization in the back, even from starting to get the wall set, making sure they're aligned. Matthew Schulte getting everybody set up, and then the clearance. We've seen it all night tonight from the Chemex. It starts in the back defensively. They have kept a clean sheet outside of the own goal, mm -hmm. and then they found a way to get it to their forward's foot. That's a good point. I mean, outside of a, a freak deflection in the box, Matt Schulte has pitched a shutout tonight. He's been mighty impressive, the senior captain on this squad. He's had a couple come on goal as well, some coming from outside the 18. He's had a couple of deflections in there. He's held his own tonight. Here's Nishida. 
Ball played forward. Skinner breaks by a defender. Isaac Skinner lost it. Skinner, actually a guy we expected to start tonight. He's a sophomore forward who his head coach, Drew Emmerich, says even though he wears 17, he very much plays like a 10, meaning this is a guy we can work our offense through. He's that talented. Well, nice to have the luxury to bring him off the bench if they want, whether they want to bring him in as a starter or have him come off the bench. And again, good fight here from the Chemex. You know, they just made that, or the Chargers rather, they just made the wholesale changes. And these guys have brought some energy here, trying to finish this game strong, even though they trail by three. continuing to fall here in the second half. It's got to be getting chilly down there, too. Uh, one of the players for Midland, uh, Ian Mianema, looks to be a, a little chilly down there. Hands tied together. Rain falling and not moving very much. Great soccer weather, Brad, to play in, but you got to be on the field. You don't want to be sitting in this. Kind of have that spitting rain coming down. It's windy as well, low 50s as we carry into the, the night here. Good energy as we reach about the 10 minute mark left in this game. And why not for supporting the Chemex? What a game they've played here tonight. Very sound up and down, and you talked about it to open this broadcast. 2014, the last time they were able to win this rivalry game, and now just under 10 minutes away from getting the win here in 2020. Now, by the way, if you're uh, watching some MCTV coverage tonight for the first time or you're a regular viewer, very excited that the uh, live stream is up for these athletic events now. We want to also let you know that we're excited to announce coming January of 2021, MCTV Network will be streaming on Roku, Apple TV, the Fire Stick, and mobile devices. So enjoy community events, government meetings, local sports, concerts, and whatever else you've come accustomed to know and love on MCTV Network. Uh, wherever you are and whenever you want, you can catch those things on your streaming devices now. So staying informed with what's going on in your community will never be easier. And if you want to, all the new ways you can share your story through MCTV, you can now create a TV show, put your videos on YouTube, uh, promote your programs on social media, and even create an audio podcast to reach a whole new audience. To learn more, call MCTV today it's 837-3474, and you can find local content on YouTube and podcasts by searching MCTV Networks Community Voices. That's really exciting stuff there. All of uh, MCTV's uh, uh, streamed content going to be available on all the new modern streaming devices as folks are more routinely cutting cable day after day. Under 10 minutes to play now. Again, Dow has made wholesale changes off their bench. They trail four to one in this rivalry matchup. Midland is bound for what looks like their first win in this matchup since 2014 in the districts. They have scored more goals in this matchup tonight. In fact, three more goals tonight than they had in all of the meetings between these two teams in the last five years. Here is Skinner, not a bad effort from about 30 yards out, but it ends up over the net. Suit him up on Friday nights, right through the uprights. Mm -hmm. A good one being played here this Friday, Midland hosting Mount Pleasant. MCTV will be back here broadcasting that game live. Nishida to Hauk. And now on its way back to Bud. Hauk in the middle. And along the back line, Pfeiffer. Midland's next game is not until Monday. They'll travel down to Saginaw Heritage to take on the Hawks. So Chemex and Hawks next Monday. 
At Dow, back in action, like we mentioned earlier, against the Bobcats of Grand Blank this Friday. And then they also play on Monday as well. Grand Blank Friday, Carmen Ainsworth on Monday, and then no stop in the schedule right now. Bay City Central next Wednesday. So that is uh, four games in eight days uh, for uh, Midland. Right, one, two, three, including tonight. Yeah, four and eight days. You got math, it. Math solid there. Well, it's a tough part of the schedule, no doubt, Brad. You highlighted it, four, four games, eight days, and uh, the other lone undefeated team now, it looks like after tonight, mm -hmm. coming up on Friday. That's a tough way to come back after losing to a rival a couple of days beforehand. And who knows, maybe a loss two days before a game against a grand blank program that um, you know, it's been a tough one to solve for nearly every program in the Saginaw Valley League. Oh, and by the way, we haven't mentioned the districts either as the MHSA continues to roll out the uh, uh, district pairings for football and for volleyball and for soccer. This district is going to be a tough one for both of these programs as good and as recognized as they are in the state of Michigan, Midland and Dow. They have been paired in a district in Division I with Heritage, but then the two big ones in the district are the two Traverse City schools, Traverse City Central and Traverse City West, who right now are both in the top seven in the state of Michigan in NPR points in Division I. Those two teams, on paper at least, will be the favorite going into the district, but certainly can't count out the way this Midland team is playing right now. Uh, they have not lost since their first four games of the year. They have been very solid including this win tonight. Yeah, really impressive all night tonight from the Chemex. They got up, took a punch through the first couple of minutes from the Chargers, and then uh, found their man up top shell. Got them that first goal. He created the second. Perry a few minutes later, and all of a sudden it was 3 to nothing. got out of the shoot. And they have really poured it on here in this second half. Just playing aggressive. They did find a goal, but possessing the ball and really staying on the gas pedal through the final 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. This is Skinner. Dishing off to Fooder. And now a substitution. Uh, Midland will insert Connor Shell back into the game and Dow gets Luke Meyer back on. Shada Nishida will take a seat tonight. Less than four minutes to go. Midland looking to make a few more substitutions here. Can Dow push one through before the end? Again, right now for the Chemics, you just want to keep everything in front. You look at how compact they are. Good rotation, keeping a good shape, and it's been the story all night long. Have to be really proud if you're coaching them, how they've played tonight. And it starts again defensively. Kept them in this game. And then they have found their attackers at opportune moments, and they finished. Frankly, this was, from nearly start to finish tonight, a Midland-dominated game. Yeah, it really has been. Once they got that first goal and kind of broke through and just kept on going. Meyer finds Penn, and now to Skinner. Deep in the corner, Skinner beats his defender, beats his second. Touches in the middle, shot is on, and it's blocked in front of the goal. Well right. done by Isaac Skinner. We mentioned that this is a starter level player off the bench. They like working through him offensively. Did a great job there to facilitate a, a scoring opportunity. Yeah, excellent composure and didn't get too nervous with the ball. Kept it on his foot, stayed patient, and uh, created a good opportunity. One of the better opportunities tonight for Dow. We've got two minutes of added time left. Two minutes of added time remaining. And 
these two teams very well could meet again in district play. They did that two years ago where they obviously played their uh, single game during the regular season and then met again in the districts. And that could take place again this year. Dow keeps pushing on. Far sideline. That's Lance Coleman with the bright orange spikes. Ethan Hauk to Penn and now to Perry. Not Meyer, beg your pardon. He tried one. It's back to Penn and back to Meyer. One minute to go. There's the one minute warning here. Dow has it along their back line, far side. Heavy touch, good battle on the far side, no whistle, they let him play. And in the final moments, Midland gets a clearance. Cole Shell played every minute of the game tonight, and he's got two goals to lead this Midland offense. At times, it looked like they were asking a little bit too much of him. He was alone up there, but he still found his scoring opportunities. Got them on the board first and last, and I think, Adam, as we start to think about a, a player of the game or a guy who made his mark on this game the most, it was certainly the sophomore Cole Shell tonight. Yeah, he sparked that early energy from this Chemex team, and you're right, they, they definitely know what to expect from him. They were okay running him up there by himself, knowing he can go one on two or three players, and he showed that getting the first goal. And there's the zeros on the scoreboard. Midland ecstatic to earn a rivalry victory tonight. You think they didn't know the last time they had beaten the Dow Chargers? I think that celebration says it all, and they deserve it. What a win tonight from start to finish. They get three goals in that first half, only give up an own goal, add one more for good measure. Late in this game, excellent performance from the home side Chemex tonight. Final score is uh, Midland four and Dow one. And we just got a shot there of the goalkeeper for the Chemex, Matt Schulte. I know we said Cole Shell was outstanding tonight, but so was Schulte. Uh, the only goal he gave up was an own goal on a freak deflection in front of his own net that he really had no chance at. Otherwise, he pitches a shutout tonight against one of the better programs in the Valley offensively, the Dow Chargers. He was very nice. Yeah, he did a good job and really credit his back four and really the back and just defensive midfield unit in all for the Chemex. This was a team win, no doubt about it. They stay composed back there, organized, and then they took advantage of those opportunities, found the back of the net four different times, a dominant performance for them on this Wednesday night. There's a great shot there, the scoreboard behind Rico Barassi addressing his group. Cole Shelb, the player there in 10. 17, Evan King, a captain who also played very well tonight. Seven there uh, is Connor Shelb, who played off the bench and provided something. And then there's six, number six there on the back with the long hair. Uh, Josh Thurlow had the second goal of the evening for Midland. The freshman comes up big in his first taste of the Midland-Dow rivalry. And uh, there's the final bit of excitement for Barassi's group. They celebrate on the field once again, and now let's celebrate with them by taking a look back at some of the goals we saw tonight. You take this first one, Shelb. He read the defense there. The ball goes over his head. He gets the near side goal. Again, we talk about maybe goals that Keep would have wanted back here. Ismail gets beat near post. That got it started. This was the third goal. Perry, a rocket. He goes far side from about 20 yards out. And all of a sudden, Brad, it was three to nothing. Yeah, this is then the own goal that we've been discussing. It ricochets off Jacob Hay. And uh, that was the only thing that Schulte gave up tonight. And then this year is the last one. Uh, this was the save by Schulte, or uh, Ishmael, beg your pardon. Actually a very fine play there on a quick reaction to make that save. Here's a goal that was called off by the Chargers on an offside. They had two of those, by the way, tonight. Chargers actually had two goals pulled back. 
Chargers had some opportunities. It just they didn't have a ton of mustard on their shots tonight. There was a great driven ball on a set piece uh, by Schwartz and Truber. Here's that other offsides. Mm -hmm. But again, that, that, those were their best chances, putting them on net, deflecting, but the offsides. And then how about this? The Ooh. capper, second of the night for Shelb. He didn't have much of a window there, had to go off that far bar to beat the keeper. And uh, Shelb did so again. Some great runs tonight from midfield on. Flying down and then finishing. Uh, he really was a big part in why they f found a way to win this one. So we're uh, addressing you one last time tonight from Midland Community Stadium. Again, we want to remind you that MCTV's uh, coverage of community uh, athletics will be continuing this week. Midland and Mount Pleasant this Friday night. Make sure to tune into that one live as well from right here at MCS. Uh, I, I know it's not the Dow Midland rivalry for folks in Midland, but Midland and Mount Pleasant, don't overlook it. Great rivalry, one point game last year. We're excited for that one on MCTV as well. And then again, this game will be archived. Just uh, go to the uh, YouTube channel for MCTV. Go to uh, the website at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov forward slash MCTV. And uh, yeah, that's how you can find all of the continuing coverage of uh, local community, government, and athletic events here in the city of Midland. Adam, any final thoughts on the game we watched tonight? Great rival reaction. Midland, somewhat of a surprise coming into the game, uh, dominates the Chargers here at home. Yeah, really just a congratulation to uh, Midland. I mean, a team, obviously, Brad has mentioned it multiple times throughout the broadcast tonight, then won this game against Dow since 2014. Was just really impressed the energy they brought. Really from the initial opening minutes when it looked like Dow created a couple of chances from that point on, Took a couple of counterattacks, got up the field. They built a three to nothing lead. And then the way they came out in the second half, they possessed the ball a little bit, kept their foot on the throttle. They weren't gonna just sit on a two goal lead. They wanted to finish this one tonight, play 80 minutes. And they certainly did so. A well-earned victory here for the Chemex. I really enjoyed it tonight. Thanks so much for uh, coming out, Adam. Uh, thanking all the volunteers once again too. If you don't know, you're watching this game everyone working on the cameras and the replays and back in the production area and the guys who are down on the field getting action shots for you, standing in the rain tonight in the second half. All of them are volunteers. We appreciate them so very much uh, to be able to put these games on and to bring you this great service uh, here in our city and in our community. It doesn't stop here with the Dow Midland rivalry though. As we've mentioned multiple times, we've got the football game coming up on MCTV in a couple of weeks the volleyball matchup, girls golf, and girls swimming all this fall. So stay tuned to MCTV's coverage this year. Once again, you see the final score on your screen right there. Midland Chemex get a rivalry victory over the HH Dow Chargers by a final of four to one. So once again, for Adam Jackson, our entire team here at Midland Community Television, my name is Brad Tunney, bidding you farewell tonight from Midland Community Stadium. And until next time, have a great night. for a new hobby? How would you like to create your own television show? 
Call Midland Community Television at 837-3474 to sign up for our next orientation studio workshop. You will learn how to use a studio camera, learn how to edit on a computer, or even be the host of your very own TV show. Don't wait. Sign up today. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to sign up. Midland Community Television, your community voice. Your local public access facility gives you the opportunity to engage your community with your own television show. The content on our Community Voices channel ranges from talk shows, variety hours, and nonprofit informational specials. With the power of video continuing to gain steam, there's no better facility to produce your own content. Check out the City of Midland website or give us a call for more information. The sooner you do, the sooner you can make your own show. Midland Community Television has exciting news for Midland area nonprofits. Recently, MCTV has undergone changes both technologically and organizationally to help you share your story better and reach your audience wherever they are. Our new services include public service announcements, special event recordings, audio podcasts, YouTube video, live TV broadcasts streamed online, and more. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV.